helping you with real estate, Mr. Mike Johnston. Today we're going to cover COVID-19 and the COVID-19 addendum, which is the RE19 provided by the Idaho Association of Realtors. We're also going to cover the COVID-19, oh, what is that called? Let's go back to the blank forms here. So we have the RE19 and we have the RE19A. The RE19 is the addendum and the 19A is the release form. So we're gonna talk about those two things. The Idaho Association of Realtors did make a change in the RE14 and RE16 and added some verbiage there, but we're not going to be covering those forms now. We're just gonna cover these other two. So with the RE19, the COVID-19 addendum, this particular form is utilized for just because we've had some problems with this pandemic. So with the COVID-19 form, let's take a look at this. It's an addendum and it can be added to any purchase and sell agreement. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. So if you're going to add this, it would be just like a regular addendum. If you already have an addendum one or two, this could be addendum number three. If you don't have an addendum to the purchase and sell agreement, this could be addendum number one. So it would be added by all in the numbers, et cetera. And then at the very bottom of the page, of course, we'd have the buyers and sellers sign this. This addendum only becomes part of it, just like any other addendum, once all the parties have signed and agreed to it being added. So on the top, we have the agreement dated, the ID number, the address, the buyers and sellers names. Then we have a couple different paragraphs. The first paragraph talks about having entered into a purchase and sell agreement, and we hereby acknowledge that there currently exists a pandemic related to a virus known as COVID-19. So it's just talking about this pandemic and that there's some problems arising. Negative effects may include reduced access to services necessary to complete the transaction. And I'll highlight that here, including services provided by real estate agents, financial institution, underwriters, appraisers, inspectors, title companies, couriers, government offices, contractors, lawyers, and insurers. In light of the conditions stated above, the buyer and seller agree that it is prudent to incorporate a force majeure clause into their agreement. A force majeure clause is contractual language that accounts for, spe for specific act of God type circumstances that may affect a party's ability to perform under the contract. Therefore, buyer and seller agree that performance under the agreement may be modified as stated below upon the event of any force majeure event. A force majeure event shall be defined as an event or circumstance actually caused by the COVID-19 pandemic that is beyond the control of a party, regardless of foreseeability, which effectively prevents the party's ability to timely perform under the agreement and which the party is not able to overcome. So with this, it's being specific for the COVID-19. It's not anything else. It's just for this particular issue. We have three different paragraphs that we're dealing with. Number one, two, and three. The first paragraph, delaying performance. Upon the occurrence of a specific force majeure event, the affected party shall, as soon as possible, provide written notice to the other party of the event and the inability to perform. Upon written notice by a party, all parties' obligations under the contract shall be automatically stayed. The stay shall remain in place for the duration of the event that is causing the inability to perform, plus, and if it's left blank, it's 14 calendar days thereafter. The event must be described with sufficient detail to, the, to state a particular problem, like an office closure, a government isolation order that prohibits certain conduct, a physician ordered quarantine. The party shall have the right to subsequent or over, overlapping stays for different or multiple force majeure events. So that's that particular paragraph. Now it says, in the event that the stay remains in place for longer than blank, 30 calendar days, the agreement shall become voidable by either buyer or seller through written notice to the other party. If the agreement is terminated under this section, buyer's earnest money shall, then you'd mark one of the three, be returned to the buyer, unless it has previously become non-refundable, retained by the seller or other. So this first paragraph, if we're having a problem and we can't do something, I can't get the appraiser to come inside the home. I can't have uh, 
the signings being delayed. I have got a problem with something else. That if it's because of COVID-19 specifically, then we can have an extension. We're all agreeing to that, the buyer and seller are. And if they terminate it because they can't do something, we're handling how the earnest money would be able to be dispersed. Number two, illness or infection. In the event an individual residing in the property contracts an illness confirmed or suspected to be COVID-19, seller shall immediately notify the buyer in writing and shall have the right to immediately restrict all access to the property. Any illness of the buyer, seller, or an individual residing in the property confirmed or suspected to be COVID-19 may be considered a force majeure event. We really don't wanna have any problems, but if there is, then access to the property can be, upon agreement here, limited by the parties. Number three, good faith. Buyer and seller agree to use good faith efforts to remain in and perform under the contract and will utilize remote or electronic services to the extent possible to avoid or circumvent force majeure events. So if somebody says, well, they agree to this and this addendum signed, then they're willing to go ahead and use an electronic notary. They're saying that they will go ahead and do a remote signing. They're doing other things that they're attempting to do so that it won't prohibit them from closing. Just because they can't go into the closing office or something doesn't mean that they won't try something else. Okay, so that right there <clears throat> would be their good faith. That right there basically is the COVID-19 addendum. All right, so let's go ahead and close this particular one up. Now remember, this form is optional. It can be utilized on the form if necessary. There's some pros and cons anytime you use a form this way. It could be a negative thing to a seller if they're trying to plan on closing at a certain time and they can't. But if they can't because of the COVID-19 pandemic, then they can't. So it's nice to have something in writing to try to keep everything together. So the RE19A, the COVID-19 release form. <clears throat> this particular one has some, it's very interesting. It's used or can be used when, uh, let's say that you're gonna go out showing some properties to people. You'd have this particular show form be signed by your buyers and anybody that's accompanying them. The seller could also have this be signed because buyers are coming into their home you could have the appraiser sign one of these, the, uh, the home inspector, a contractor doing work. Even us as real estate professionals going to a property could have one of these signed. Why? It's to minimize the potential lawsuits that could happen. Right now, if someone were to go into the home, let's say that they go into the house and this buyer has COVID-19 and they spread that to the sellers or other buyers that come through the property. That could be a lawsuit. Same thing when, let's say one of the sellers has it and a buyer comes into the property and gets it. We're gonna try to do everything that we can to not spread this. But in the event that somebody gets it unknowingly or whatever, this is a release for it. I use the example like climbing a rock wall or going to Lagoon and at Lagoon, they have that one ride that shoots you up into the air and you have to sign a little waiver or a disclaimer, a whole harmless release. That's what this is, but it's for this virus. So in the event that you get hurt from climbing the rock wall or fall or something, you don't plan on getting hurt, but if you did, you're gonna hold the people harmless because it's not them. They're just providing access and other things. With this, they're providing access to you at your choice if you want to go in and look at the home. If you choose to go in there right now, you know there are some limitations and some liability possibly, but it's up to you. So here's the four different, here's the acknowledgement. In light of the current COVID-19 pandemic, I acknowledge that I may have the option of using remote and electronic means to reduce or eliminate the possibility of in-person physical visits to property and or direct contact with other individuals in relation to transactions pertaining to the transfer of real property. However, I also acknowledge that it may be desirable or necessary to physically visit, enter, or examine real property in person. I recognize, especially in the event 
I choose not to exclusively utilize electronic or remote options like a video camera or something along those ways, I may come in contact with or be in close proximity to other individuals simply by being part of or assisting in a real estate transaction. I understand that in light of the pandemic, it is not always possible to determine who has or has not been exposed to or contracted the COVID-19 or similar virus, and that due to the nature of said viruses, nearly any individual could spread the disease. I further understand that by being part of a real estate transaction, I may end up visiting various properties, locations, and offices, which may have been exposed to numerous other individuals. Here you have the choice to mark one of four. The first one, I am or may become a buyer or lessee in a real estate transaction and or I am accompanying a potential buyer or lessee. I have read and agreed to the acknowledgement stated above and hereby grant the release and waiver stated below. So that would be one option. The second one, you could mark, I am or may become a seller or lessor in a real estate transaction and or occupy a property listed for sale. I have read and agreed to the acknowledgement stated above and further understand that by placing property for sale and making property available for viewing, inspection, appraising, and or evaluation, the property may end up being visited by various individuals. I hereby grant the release and waiver stated below. Because we don't know who's coming into the property. Third one. I am a real estate broker or agent. As a licensed real estate industry professional, I understand my COVID-19 associated risk. I have read and agreed to the acknowledgement stated above and hereby grant and release and waiver stated below. Then the last one, kind of a catch-all. I am otherwise involved in or providing services as part of a real estate transaction. As an individual providing services to the real estate industry, I understand my COVID-19 associated risk. I have read and agreed to the acknowledgement stated above and hereby grant the release and waiver stated below. So <clears throat> as a licensee, I would, my personal choice, I would have everybody that I'm showing homes to fill out one of these documents. That way they're agreeing to hold the seller harmless as well as me, the agent harmless. I also think that if we have a property listed, our sellers will want to have this be signed by all the people that are coming into their home. So I think it would be a good thing to start getting this signed and holding it on file when you're showing these people. And if you need to, you can share that information with the seller or the other agent if they're asking it or requesting it. The bottom part, release of liability and waiver. The Idaho Association of Realtors felt that this was so important that they actually want them to initial one more time. They can't just say, oh, I've seen it and they signed the bottom of it. They want the people to initial this. And I think by having it be initialed, it adds a little bit more responsibility to everybody there because they actually can see it and they've marked it and have agreed to it. Let's read this particular release of liability and waiver. I, the undersigned, can also say we, hereby consent to accept and assume the risk that the COVID-19 or related viruses will spread, and that despite best efforts to minimize said spread, I may be exposed to the virus by being part of or assisting in a real estate transaction. I realize that a risk of transmission to others and serious illness and or death may result from the exposure to the virus, which may be by my own actions or inactions, but also from the actions, inactions, or negligence of others, and I voluntarily consent to assume this risk. Further, I covenant and agree to hold harmless all releasees as defined below and hereby waive any and all claims against the releasees in law or equity, whether in tort, contract, premises liability, or otherwise, arising out of or relating to exposing, spreading, contracting, or transmitting COVID-19 or similar viruses, including but not limited to and regardless of any violation of any state, local, or federal government orders, guidelines, regulations, or laws pertaining to the same. This is pretty much an open release. So it's unconditional, it's independent of any other contracts, and it's not rescindable. So it's a very serious statement that you're saying. Here it defines who the releasees are. It says releasees is defined to mean all individuals or entities directly or indirectly providing any service associated with the real estate transaction 
which the undersigned is or may become involved with. Releasees shall include, but not be limited to, sellers, buyers, landlords, occupants, tenants, real estate brokers and agents, transaction coordinators, financial institution employees, inspectors, appraisers, repairmen, attorneys, title and closing agents, and all the independent contractors, legal agents, legal entities, staff, or assistants thereof. So it's pretty much inclusive. This agreement to hold harmless, rele hold releasees harmless is for the express purpose of benefiting each releasee. The provisions hereof may be enforced by any releasee. This waiver agreement is absolute and unconditional, cannot be rescinded. It is independent of any other contract involving the undersigned and applies to undersigned's heirs, legal representatives, successors, assigns, and anyone else claiming under them. To the extent the terms of this waiver agreement modify or conflict with any provisions of any other agreement or contract involving the undersigned, the terms of this waiver shall control. Then we have the signatures, they print their name and title, if any, and date it. Line 60, where we talk about applicable property address, if any. I don't think that you really need to put down the property address. <clears throat> you can leave it open for all the ones that they're going into. So this, if this is a buyer, you're gonna go through multiple properties. So you don't need to have that address written down for each one of the properties. However, if a seller says we want one to be signed, you could have a copy of this signed by your people and that copy that you have you could put that address on it and provide that to the seller. Okay, but you have to make sure you have permission from your buyer to do so. And that would be this particular form here. So, so there's even talk that the RE19A, anybody coming into our office, let's say, could fill this out because there's a chance that they could get it from the office. If you're going to give them a ride in your car, you might have them fill this out because they could be in your car, showing homes, all those other things, it makes sense to have this. So that would be the RE19A COVID-19 release form.